or in the legs, that was kind of the main place I wanted to focus was just get my legs stronger and keep a little bit of mobility in there and just really build that base, and, you know, get myself ready to play 162 games and stay healthy all year. Was that done with a goal also to maybe drive the ball more at all? Or, or are you still focused on just being a gap to gap guy? And if the home runs come, they come. Yeah. I mean, it goes hand in hand a little bit, you know, I, I want to put on strength obviously to impact the ball a little bit more, but the approach is going to remain the same for me. I think it's not going to, you know, just because I may feel a little bit stronger, I'm not going to change my thought process up there at all. Really. Okay. Next question. We'll go to Matt Breen. Hey, uh, when you look back at last year offensively, what was the biggest thing that you learned? Uh, really more than anything, just, uh, kind of, how to manage at bats, I guess, throughout a whole game and how to throughout a whole series and just how to kind of, uh, you know, take what they're giving you and kind of learn from how one guy may attack you and how that may lead to the rest of the team kind of attacking you and the rest of the pitching staff on um, that you're facing that week or that weekend attacking you. And just, uh, you know, just little things here and there picking up from, you know, chewing on the ears of all these guys in the clubhouse. You know, we have so many guys that have been here for for a long time playing this game at a really high level and uh, they're always uh, good to lean on. And, and just like making adjustments, it, it was it, how does that change from the minor league level to playing in the majors? Pit pitchers, obviously, you know, probably know more about you in the majors than they did in the minors. How, right, how were you right. able to make adjustments throughout the season? Right. Uh, I think a big part of it is, you know, all the information we have now, right. You know, there's, uh, there's pretty much anything that you could think of there's there's numbers on it and there's information and there's a scouting report on it so uh you know my mindset on that is kind of knowing my own report and kind of knowing uh knowing where my weaknesses are and not only just to work on them but to know how teams are going to attack me and what they're uh, kind of you know have a better idea of what their plan is going to be and what they're going to try to do to get me out and in a short season like last year there was really no time for you to even get your feet wet and when you look at like the final stats of the year, it seemed like you didn't waste any time and you know, with making those adjustments. So how do you think you fit in so quickly last year and didn't really even have to go through those growing pains? Uh, a lot of credit to the, to the team, you know, from day one, when I got there, they were really good about, you know, letting me know that, you know, they want me there and that I belong and, you know, they were just really good about making me comfortable and let me be myself. And, uh, you know, I think that had a big part in me coming out and just I played relaxed. It was the same game for me. And, uh, you know, I had fun. And at the end of the day, I think, you know, a lot of the success I had came from that. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Okay, next two, we'll go to Bob Brookover and then Scott. I think, Bob, you're still muted. Al, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Uh, hey, I want to talk about the other side of the ball a little bit, if I could. H how important is defense to you? And I, I was talking to Larry Bow about you the other day, and he said you've improved leaps and bounds since Wichita State. It, do you feel that's the case? Absolutely. Yeah, the game's just – I've said it before. It's really just slowed down for me on that side of the ball. Uh, you know, I'm starting to just, you know, see how – feel how the play's going to go before the ball even really gets to me and uh, just little things like that. And, you know, that comes with just repetition and doing it over and over again. And, uh, but I definitely feel, yeah, light years ahead of where I was. What do you attribute to the, to the slowing down of the game most? Uh, reps, uh, you know, the staff here is out there every minute I'm out there. So, I mean, they're, They've done so much to help me and really just repetition. You know, there's, there's no substitute for it. There's no magic pill. I just had to go out there and work and get better at it. And I feel like I've done that, but there's still further to go for sure. Did you hear the questions when you were coming, coming out on the draft that, Oh, is he a third baseman or not? Uh, and did you, did, you, did you want to prove? Yes, I am. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, anytime there's any doubt that, you know, guys like us, can do something you know 
athletes want to prove people wrong. So yeah, there's a little bit of that for sure. And, and are you aware you're in an organization that maybe had two of the greatest defensive third basemen in the history of the game in, in Scott Rowland and, and Mike Schmidt, how, how aware are you of them and their games and how much are, did you get it? Have you gotten a chance at all to pick Schmidt's brain, for example? Yeah. I mean, I think if you, if you play third base, you're aware of those two guys, right? They're, uh, they're two of the best that have ever done it. And, uh, I've got to, I've met Mike Schmidt. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, I haven't been able to really pick his brain too much, but uh, because now everything going on, we haven't, he hasn't really been able to come around much, but uh, yeah, for sure. I think I'm excited to be able to kind of sit down with him more and get to know him and, uh, you know, pick his brain a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Alec, um, kind of uh, following on Matt's question. One thing I'm, I'm, I was interested in last year was, you know, you played, because it was a short season, you played really the same handful of teams over and over and over again, it seemed like. And um, so you were going through the league a second time a whole lot faster than most um, rookies do who come up. What did you notice in terms of how you were being pitched the second time and the third time, maybe even that you faced a team? And and was there any pattern to um, to how teams were, were approaching you? Uh, I wouldn't say there was an exact pattern, but, you know, I definitely noticed when, when I showed a weakness or where I would miss and where I would, was it maybe a tick off that day or something? They, they, there was no mercy. They were, they were going at it and they were definitely like, if they found a hole, if they found something that they thought they had an advantage, they're going to attack it until you prove you can do something with it. So. Yeah. Kind of, um, I mean, you handled that really well. Um, was there, was there anything that you could draw on, um, you know, maybe even in your college career or, or anything like minor league career that, that would allow you to make those adjustments as quickly as you did? Honestly, just that dugout talk, uh, you know, when you're sitting in there and you can go, Hey, Kutch, you know, you've been facing this guy for six years, you know, and then he can pretty much tell you everything he's going to do. And, you know, I'd be a fool not to, you know, use those guys and, you know, ask them because these guys, I mean, it's a lot of these guys have, you know, we've got a deep lineup with a lot of experience and pretty much one through nine, I can go up to any of them and they've probably faced the guy we're facing sometime in the past. And they, you know, they probably got something that can help me. So I really just lean on those guys a ton. Cool. Thank you. Next question. We'll go to Jim. Alex, I apologize if you asked this earlier um, about, you know, adding a little bit of muscle. Do you remember what your weight was when you ended last year and what it is now when you checked in? Uh, yeah, I floated around 215 around there last season. Um, now I float around 225, give or take a little bit each day. So, yeah, about 8 to 10 pounds. Nothing crazy, but I, I definitely feel strong. I feel good. And my body feels good. I'm ready to go. How much of a, like – motivator inspiration um was finishing tied for second in the rookie of the year i mean it's 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 going to be a, a, a great honor for you does it even make you a little more uh motivated to do even more this year or have an even better year yeah i mean definitely uh just grateful for the year i had last year and uh you know for me, you know, finishing second doesn't really add any extra motivation or anything like that. I has, I'm still as motivated as I would be if I hit a buck 80 or if I hit 400 last year. It's, it's the same mindset and it's, you know, it's going to be the same approach to the season as I usually always have. And it's just, you know, go out there, take it a day at a time, put together good at bats, do my job on the defensive side of the ball and, uh, you know, try to find ways to help the team win every day. Cool. Thanks. All right, we have time for one more. We'll finish up with Tim Kelly. Hey, Alec, do you worry at all that adding some of that muscle could limit you defensively at third base, even if it's helping you offensively? No, to be honest with you, I feel better in, in the field than I did last year. My legs feel stronger. I feel mobile, agile, all the all those things. Uh, no, and it's it's not like a, a real noticeable thing. Like, it's not – I you know, I – probably played around the same weight when I was in double a. So really I I'm not, 
it's not, I'm not as much like it's not a noticeably big change. Like I bulked up at all, but you know, I just a little bit more muscle. But uh, no, I feel my body feels good. There's no, I don't think it's going to affect me at all defensively. All right. Thank you, Alec. Appreciate it. Yep. And we'll have Joe Girardi up with us in a little bit, everybody. <clears throat> you just hang tight.
Andrew Joe Girardi with us, and we will open it up for questions. Start off with Jim Salisbury. You're on mute, so Jimmy. I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, Joe, I was just wondering if Bryce completed his intake and did he get on the field today? He did. He went through everything today. So um, no issues. Everything was good. It was just, it was kind of a day late, like I talked about. And we knew that going in just because of he wanted to finish his routine for the week and get here. And we were great with it. What is well, your hat today? Yesterday, was it the Red Hawks? Uh, yeah, the Red Hawks. Yeah, today's, this is Kenneth. Kenneth, little town where I live. Okay. So, uh, like, you know, can you tell us, you know, Kingery, you describe what he looks like and Baum a little stronger, Kingery a little leaner. What does Bryce look like? Uh, he looks fairly normal. He looks like Bryce <laughs> to me. Um, I, I would say he's the same size as he's been. Um, he looks extremely strong and tremendous shape like he always is. So I don't really see a, a whole lot of change, you know, in – He's not bigger or smaller to me. He's, he's, uh, you know, this is like the three little bears. They're the chairs or whatever. Right? <laughs> Did you have any off-season conversations with him, or even maybe in the last few days about this is his third year here? Um, there's, he, you know, he's a big-ticket guy. But the team hasn't been to the playoffs, and have you been able to gauge like kind of what he's thinking, how bad he wants it, especially after the way last year ended and whatnot? Well, we didn't necessarily talk about that. We talked about improving the team, you know, that sort of thing. But I think Bryce is hungry every day. I mean, that's in the short time that I was with him, that was that really stuck out to me how hungry he is to win. I don't think that's ever going to change. I, I, I think that's in his DNA. I think he's an, you know, he loves to compete and he's a fierce competitor. And I think we can all see that and how he plays the game. So I don't think that will ever change. Right. Alrighty, thank you. All right, let's go to Matt Breen and then Rob Kessner. Hey, Joe. Hi, Matt. Is there any, any update on the guys that had uh, visa issues? Or is that yeah, still yeah. a holdup? I have nothing to report there. I know that some of the players are supposed to do it this week, but I don't have any definitive answers. As soon as I get them, I will let you know. And we just talked to Alec Bohm, and when you look back at his year last year, how impressive is his offensive production when you put in the context that he skipped a minor league level and, and he was playing in a 60 game season. So there was really like no time to go through a, a right. slump that you might see in a, over a full season. Oh, I think it was pretty incredible what he did last year. Um, you know, I know I, if I had a vote, he was the rookie of the year. I mean, cause he was an everyday player that made an impact and I don't want to take away from the, you know, the rookie of the year cause he had an incredible season too, but you got to like, I like my guy and that's the guy I get to see every day. But I just think what impressed me about Alec was adjustments that he made, how we improved during the course of the season. Um, and he had to do it in a high pressure situation. You know, usually you get the chance to do a lot of that in the minor leagues. Well, he was kind of forced to do it at the big league level a little bit. And um, I was impressed in how he handled it. And he was talking about how he would be in the dugout and picking brains of like Andrew McCutcheon, for example, what does that say for, uh, a young kid coming in and, and knowing that that, you know, that that's all that information is around you and being willing to go out and use it. Well, I think that it just shows you that, that he's a guy that has the ability to learn, to process information, to apply the information. And he studies other people, what they do. Um, to me, that's really intelligent, you know, because you can learn a lot from the people that have been through, what you're about ready to go through. Everyone's mind is a little bit different and you're gonna handle it a little bit different, but you can take some cues and it helps you know what to expect in a certain sense. And uh, we have some pretty good veterans that are helpful like that. Thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. Hey, Joe, I uh, wanted to ask, we were just on a, um, a Zoom with Philadelphia city officials and the subject of Phillies fans on opening day came up and the health of, uh, uh, commissioner basically said that he believes it's likely that fans would be able to attend opening day in Philadelphia pending state approval. Can't get into numbers or anything of that sort, but that literally just happened. So I know you haven't had a chance to really be around Phillies fans in your time in Philadelphia. What would it mean to have fans back in the building 
at any level or any number uh, for, for opening day. Well, I would love it. And I think our players are going to love it. And I think our players are longing for it. You know, as much as we love to play, we also love to play in front of fans that are passionate, like the Philadelphia Philly fans are. And I, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, you know, I'm not as close to the state officials as you are, so I don't get those calls. Um, but I think we're all looking forward to it. And uh, that would be a great way to start the season. Yeah, Joe, they usually start with me, then they get to Salisbury and work their way around. So that's, that's I, how I, I love it. I love it. Well, some people <laughs> got connections. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Yeah. All right, let's go to Scott and then Bob Rook over. Hey, Joe. Um, when Scott. we were talking about Bryce the other day, you know, you mentioned uh, that when he got into camp, you know, wanting to kind of keep a watchful eye on, on his back and how that was doing. Was that um, – just because back injuries can be tricky and, and that kind of thing, or is there reason to think that, um, you know, that it could linger with him a while? I guess what's the status of, of that injury last year? Has it gone away? He feels, he feels really good. No, I just know that they can, they can rear their ugly head because I, I am a back patient, right? I've herniated L4, L5, T2, T3, um, and, and I've had to deal with it. Um, so, you know, I know that it, you have to stay on top of it and you have to keep a pulse. And sometimes you might be a little cranky one day for no rhyme or reason. Um, it's just a movement that you made. So um, to me, uh, we're really pleased with where he's at. We're excited where he's at. But I, I think, you know, there has to be constant communication. Have you um, have you started scratching out lineups yet? And, uh, you know, I know Bryce hit you know, in the three hole there for you, a, a large majority of the year last year, is that kind of where you see him uh, in, in this year's group? I do. I do. Now I have not started really scratching out lineups because we were pretty, you know, like a lot of clubs, we weren't exactly sure who we were going to have. I have some ideas in my mind um, how I want to do it. And, um, you know, I thought you were talking about a spring training lineup, you know, from February 28th. And I, th what I did yesterday is I put up the date, you know, we have eight games that we can put up put up the date and who we're playing. So that's the extent of where I'm at for our spring training lineup on Sunday. Do you have a pitcher uh, for Sunday? Uh, not yet. I'm going to get with Caleb and try to give it to you guys tomorrow. If Caleb has a chance to talk to the pitchers, it's just a little bit early because we want to make sure that they feel okay before we go. But um, we're getting pretty close to that. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Joe, how are you doing? Good. How are you, Bob? Good. Um, defensively, what were your expectations and, and what were you told about Alec uh, going into last season? And did, did he exceed those expectations? He did for me. Um, you know, I had a chance to talk to a number of people that are around him that just marveled at what our minor league staff did with him, you know, over those couple of years, how far that he has come and, and he's even going to get better, but there were adjustments that he had, that he made during the season. Um, he got a little funk for a couple of days and found a, you know, found his way out, played, you know, I thought pretty good defense the rest of the year. So I was, I was pleased. And it's not easy to be a six, six infielder. It, it, it just really isn't, but I think he moves around well and I think he'll continue to improve. And um, I know one thing, he works really hard at it. And, and that's always, you know, when you think about, you want players that are good on both sides of the baseball. I think he's going to be really good on both sides. What do you think he needs to improve almost? defensively you know I I think it's positioning at times understanding hitters you know reading the ball um you know there there'll be throws that that like I he's going to probably make this year that I haven't seen him make just because you know he had some ground balls last year but over 45 games you don't see that many so it's hard for me to say everything but you know I always say that you can get better at everything right and, and you could be a nine out of ten I'm gonna tell you well you can be a ten out of ten um that's what I believe. So he'll continue to work at it. Um, and we'll just watch him grow as a player. There, were, there was talk at one point, maybe he's not a third baseman for the, the long haul. In your mind, he's for the. I think, I think he's going to do a good job. I really do. And a lot of that is his mindset and his work ethic um, that's going to allow him to do that. And, and the one other question is, so two of the, maybe the best defensive third baseman in history are Schmidt and Roland. You played against both of them. How tough is it for 
a player to come into an organization and there's a legacy at that position. Is that, does the player just have to block that out or? Yeah, I think you have to block that out. And the good thing is, right, it's not like he's coming in right after Scott Rowland or right after Mike Schmidt. There's been a lot of time that have passed. You know, I mean, Scott was obviously later than Mike since Scott has played. So it, it, it's just different. Had he come in right after Scotty, that would have been tougher. Thanks. All right, let's go to Rob Mahdi and then Tim Kelly. Hey, Joe, uh, sticking with hey, Al, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. One of the things that struck me the most about him last year was his ability to hit the opposite way and his ability to hit with two strikes. And that's usually something that guys have to work on as they get older. For him to do that as a rookie, how impressive was that? And, and what does that say about his one maturity level as a hitter and his upside going forward? Well, I think it says a lot about both. You know, we saw it in spring training and I saw that, you know, he was a guy that, you know, his focus on was making solid contact, not necessarily trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Um, he was worried about two strikes, finding a way to put the ball in play instead of saying, oh, well, I got to put my A swing on it. And if I miss it, it's not a big deal. That's not who he is. Right? He's going to hit to the count. He's going to hit to the situation. And that's extremely mature for a player of his age. And I think that's why we saw him be successful, because he understands that concept. And it's a concept that you hope all players learn in an early age, but it just doesn't happen. But he has it. And um, I think that's why he's going to be really successful moving forward. Hey, Joe, have you been able to gauge what type of baseball shape Odubel Herrera is in? Well, I know he's in tremendous shape. Baseball shape, no matter what type of shape you're in, is is a different shape. And, it, you know, all our players are asked to do a certain thing and, and be in a certain shape when they get here. And it's really so they can train, right? So they don't get fatigued when they're training. But standing on a baseball field and doing those type of things is a different type of training, and they got to get used to it. But as far as are there any red flags on his training? No, no. He's in, he's in really good shape. You just got to get in baseball shape like everybody else. You got to get used to standing around. All right. Looks like we have one more hand. We'll finish up with Jim. Joe, just curious, how did your impressions of Bryce Harper as an opposing manager and a broadcaster match up with getting to know him and managing the genuine article, the genuine, you know, the real person? Not really knowing Bryce at all. Um, trying to find the right word. I, I think it's like, it's really good to see that everything he does is genuine. He works extremely hard. He loves his craft. He loves to play. He plays hard that he's real, right? This is who Bryce is, right? So to me, that was like great to see because you, you want players that, come to work, ready to play every day, physically, mentally, and play hard. And that's what he does. So to me, that was like, man, that's, that's so great because I didn't really know Bryce. I didn't see Bryce play a lot. You know, I was in the American League a lot. We didn't play against them a lot. So I wasn't very familiar. But I love what I see. Do you think folks on the outside wonder if it is indeed real? You know, I don't know about that. I you know, I, I got to tell you, when I say it's it's real in a sense, like I never really saw Bryce play a lot, so I didn't know how hard he played. Okay. And then you watch it day in and day out, and you're like, this is real. This is who he is. He does this every day. So I, I don't. I'm not talking about is his personality real. That's not what I'm talking about. Like, you know, I might tune in and watch him hit or see a highlight, but I don't get to see how hard he runs to the first base all the time, how he's prepared every day. I mean, that's just who he is. And uh, to me, that's that's one way of being a great leader. When, you know, your performance matches up with your work ethic and your work ethic is excellent, you can say, well, now I know why he's so good, right? So it matches up. And those guys are a lot of times are leaders in your clubhouse, and I feel Bryce is. So what, thanks. what did you think of his Philly Fanatic bat? His what? <laughs> his Philly Fanatic bat. 
I love the stuff he comes out with. I'm always like curious, like on certain days, you know, whether it's Mother's Day or Father's Day or opening day, like what his shoes are going to be. Right. So I, I'm always curious and, and kind of thinking, man, I wish I had a little style, but I just that was not one of my blessings. <laughs> Thanks. Jim. He's yeah. going to wear some on Sports Writer Day. <laughs> right. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Jim.